Hello everyone and welcome. In the first video of the series, we had replaced the human brain with a controller. We will denote this controller using G and we will denote the system using H. The output is fed back compared with the reference and this error passes through the controller. This is a closed loop control system. Let us redraw it this way. Over here, we will introduce a new term called loop gain. Loop gain is nothing but the gain of this system across the loop. In this case, it is just g times h and we will denote it with t. We can convert this closed loop system to an open loop system using some calculation. Or in other words, the transfer function from reference to output is t upon 1 plus t. Pause here to look at these calculations. Now, it is not easy to find poles of t upon 1 plus t if you do not have any mathematical tool. For example, if t is 1 upon s plus 1 the whole square, you know the roots of s plus 1 the whole square is minus 1 and minus 1. But when you find t upon 1 plus t, you will have to do more calculations to find the roots and it can get much more complex for higher orders. There were also not any tools available in the olden times, but people were smart and they found different techniques to analyze the closed loop transfer function. To do it, we will use some approximations. Before that, I have drawn a Bode plot of t for just an example. Later, we will take real life systems and find out the loop gain. Now, let us see what t upon 1 plus t looks like. When t is much greater than 1, the expression reduces to t upon t which is equal to 1 or 0 dB. Similarly, when t is much less than 1, the expression reduces to just t or it follows the loop gain. Now, if you notice this is the transfer function of output to reference and the purpose of a control system is to match the reference to output. So basically, we want the reference to output ratio to be equal to 1 and that is exactly what we achieve when t is much greater than 1. Higher the value of t, the smaller will be the error between the reference and output. For example, if t is 100 in the low frequency region, then output to reference will become 100 upon 101 or there is an error of 1%. If we increase t further, error will be even less. To take this discussion further, we will list down requirements of what makes a good control system good. We have already seen the first requirement. The steady state error should be as close to zero as possible. In terms of frequency domain, what it means is the low frequency gain should be high. If you have noticed, the closed loop gain is less than 1 or less than 0 dB for higher frequencies and hence our system will attenue at higher frequencies. And this leads to our second requirement. Control system should attenuate noise in the system. This could be the measurement noise for example. In terms of frequency response, the way we achieve it is by having the loop gain t roll off at higher frequencies. Let us see the third requirement. The rise time of the system. How much time does it take for the output to match the reference? That is, how fast is our system? In terms of frequency response, this is given by the bandwidth or the crossover frequency. This is the frequency when loop gain t crosses the 0 dB mark and the output no longer follows the reference. But why does bandwidth determine how fast the system should rise? This is because the output can track the reference for only frequencies lesser than the crossover frequency and hence it can only rise as fast as those frequencies allow. There is one more requirement, overshoot of the system. The system should not overshoot too much or maybe none at all. Unfortunately, there is no direct parameter in the frequency domain that governs overshoot. It depends on how stable the system is. And this also leads to our next topic, stability of the system. This is a very important topic in control theory. Let us see why stability is important. We know from previous videos that poles should not lie in the right half plane or the system will get unstable and the output will go to infinity. But where should the poles lie in the left half plane? Is it sufficient to keep the poles just near to the imaginary axis? Yes, the system will be stable but is it sufficiently stable? To answer this, let's say you are manufacturing a drone and you have tuned a controller for it. But not every drone is going to be the same because of manufacturing tolerances. Also, the drone might deteriorate over time. For example, if some portion of plastic has tipped off, then it might shift the center of gravity of that drone. Chances are that the controller you tuned may not work and the system would become unstable. You do not want that, so you keep a margin on stability. Luckily, we have a way to quantify stability. Let us look at a closed loop transfer function t upon 1 plus t. 
We know that the system will blow up when the denominator goes to zero or t is equal to minus one. So it is good to be far away from the point where gain is equal to one and phase is equal to minus one eighty degrees. Hence, we define two terms: gain margin and phase margin. Gain margin is how far the loop gain is from zero dB when phase is minus one eighty degrees. Similarly, phase margin is how far away t is from minus one eighty degrees when gain is zero dB. On the right, we have the same Bode plot of t that we saw earlier, along with the phase plot. When gain is zero dB, phase is fifty eight point eight degrees far from minus one eighty degrees, and hence we got our phase margin. And the gain margin is infinity as phase asymptotically approaches minus one eighty degrees. Typically, you want the phase margin to be more than forty five degrees, and a gain margin of ten dB is reasonable. We will see why in future with examples. In this case, it satisfies the requirement as we have fifty-eight point eight degrees. But you will not always find a system with all the desired characteristics, like high DC gain, required bandwidth, roll-off at higher frequencies, and sufficient gain and phase margin. To understand this, let us take an example of a DC motor, and we want to control the torque of this motor. We will measure the torque, compare it with the reference, find the error, and this completes our closed-loop system. Now. This closed loop system is not going to work as desired. Think about why the output will not follow the reference. We will try to find this answer using Bode plots. For that, we need to know the loop gain of the system. A DC motor can be characterized using the torque to input voltage transfer function and I have used the following values for this particular example. In the next video we will find out how to obtain this transfer function. But for now, let us move forward. Notice that this is also the loop gain of the system as there is no controller present. Now, let us see the step response of the system. What that means is we will give a step change of one in our reference and we will see the output. Why do we look at the step response? This is because a step signal has all the frequencies in it and we will come to know how the system performs for each frequency. This response is not at all good as there is a very large error. But let us see from the Bode plot point of view. Here is a Bode plot of the loop gain t. Now we can see that it has a very low DC gain of approx minus 12 dB or 0.25. But we know that we need a high DC gain much much greater than one for very low steady state error. So it is expected that the output will not follow the reference. How do we overcome this problem? We design a controller and add it to our closed loop control. Controller is nothing but a combination of poles and zeros that will shape our loop gain. Consider the transfer function of a controller to be this. Now, the loop gain is a product of system transfer function and this controller. In other words, we have manipulated the loop gain. Let us take out the Bode plot of this new loop gain. This was the plot of the old loop gain. This is the plot of the controller we used, and this is the new loop gain. This time, we can see that the loop gain satisfies all the requirements. It has a high DC gain, good bandwidth, and attenuates higher frequencies. The phase margin is 90 degrees, and the gain margin is infinite. We can also check out the step response of the system. We can see that the output follows the reference with a negligible steady state error. So we have completed our task of reference tracking. But how did I choose this compensator in the first place? Let us find out in the next couple of videos. We also skipped another requirement of a control system. The fifth requirement is it should be able to reject disturbance. Let us take the example of a drone. There might be a sudden gust of wind that will act as a disturbance in the system. We should be able to counter this disturbance. But how do you define it quantitatively? First, let us add this disturbance to our output in the closed loop system that we earlier saw. And now, we will find the output to disturbance transfer function. And it turns out that it is equal to one upon one plus t. Pause here to take a look at these calculations. We will use the same approximations now. When t is much greater than one, we can ignore one in the denominator, and the expression becomes one upon t. Or in other words, if low frequency gain is high, then the disturbance will be rejected well. When t is much less than one, the expression reduces to one or zero dB, which means that the system is capable of rejecting only low frequency disturbances. Let us see this step response to understand it. These are the reference and the output signals. Over here. I have given a step disturbance, and we are seeing how the output behaves. It takes time to reject this disturbance and settle back to the original value. 
and this time is decided by the bandwidth of the system. You must have noticed that we need high DC gain for two reasons, to eliminate steady state error and to reject low frequency disturbance. If you have observed, we never need to calculate the exact closed loop transfer function t upon 1 plus t. We can find out the characteristics of closed loop transfer function just by looking at the loop gain t. Let us summarize what we learned. We want the output to follow the reference step input and the bandwidth determines how fast the output will rise. Then the system might overshoot and at the end it might have some steady state error. Also, we saw how to quantify stability using gain margin and phase margin. Finally, we saw that a system might not satisfy all these requirements and hence we need to shape the loop gain using controllers. In the next couple of videos, we will look at different techniques of modeling a system and a few methods to design and tune a controller. Till then, do check out the previous video if you have not watched them yet. See you next time.